Kenya Suzuki is a 41-year-old Japanese mangaka, the author behind Please Tell Me Gaoko-chan, a gyaru manga that got adapted into an anime, and just the trailer for the anime has 800,000 views. Kenya Suzuki was very well respected, and had a rating on the anime of 7.0. All of that changed very recently, when Kenya Suzuki was exposed for alleged possession and importing of what I can only refer to as cheese pizza. If you put the first two letters of those words together, you'll know what I'm referring to. A very heinous crime that many people view to be one of the worst possible things a human can do. Something that I've discussed many times in this channel before, YouTubers, content creators, influencers that do this sort of thing, but never before in this channel have I discussed a mangaka or manga author who was accused of something like this, especially such a successful one that had their own anime about their series, which often stands to reflect how famous and successful they are. There has been an arrest around this situation and a lot of people have commented on how widely accepted or forgiven this has been in the Japanese media, which I will discuss later in this video, but before I do, if you are new to the channel, please do consider subscribing. I make videos almost every single day discussing situations that interest me and what I believe will interest you. If you clicked on this video, you'll probably click on some of my other content, so click the subscribe button and notification bell in case YouTube doesn't send you my videos anyway, so that you can watch them, so that you don't miss anything, and so you can keep up to date on the news in any community, I guess. You can also check out my Twitch if you'd like to see me live where I discuss situations like this one if they don't get made into videos with my more generalized, uncensored takes because I have to censor my stuff down on YouTube, and if you just want to see more of me in general, that would be highly appreciated. Aiming for 1k followers over there, and you can also check out my Twitter as well if you'd like to support me over there and see some of my takes that don't get made into videos. And with that being said, let's get right into it. In December of 2021, the Kyoto News Service reported that the Aishi Prefectural Police had arrested 40-year-old manga creator Kenya Suzuki on suspicion of possessing cheese pizza imported from Germany in violation of the Japanese Customs Act. Kyoto reported that the resident allegedly had six photo collections that he had collected by international mail on two separate occasions in September and October of last year. According to the authorities, Suzuki stated on arrest that he desperately wanted to acquire these illicit images that cannot be acquired in Japan. The report added that the police have confiscated 46 books and publications allegedly containing cheese pizza from the residents. A large defense I see for many people when they discuss situations like these in Japan is that the age that people can agree to illicit acts in Japan is 13. However, that is a complete mis conception. While the federal age for illicit acts like these in Japan is 13, under the Japanese criminal law code, all municipalities and prefectures have their own particular laws, such as Tokyo's youth protection law, which prohibit illicit acts with youths who are under 18 years old in most circumstances. There is no defense for Kenya Suzuki trying to possess material like this, and the fact that he said he wanted this material because it wasn't available in Japan means there is absolutely no defense for this behavior. Now, there wasn't any defense for this anyways, don't get me wrong, I want to make it very clear, I see no excuse for any of this behavior at all. Many people, in Japan especially, were looking for reasons to excuse Kenya Suzuki's actions. This is something that the anime man talks about in one of his videos, and I'll play a clip here for it. There are legitimately some people on the internet, and some uh, fans of some of these creators, who are trying to defend these creators in the name of art. You could be the biggest lolly Colin in the world, and you'll know that there is a limit, especially when it comes to real life children. There is a massive, massive difference between owning of real children and a potential drawing of any capacity. Don't try and lump that into the same thing, guys. All of these artists should know very well that these two worlds do not mix, and you cannot throw this away as just being a expression of art or anything like that, because it's not. It's a f***ing crime. Following this arrest, on December the 24th, Kadokawa's Comic Walker platform, which released his manga chapter by chapter through its webcomic imprint, revealed that it had pulled the series from its platform and stopped serialization due to media reports about the author. The series page now leads to a 404 error page. Honestly, it's incredibly good news to hear Japanese companies like Kadokawa, the companies that serialize his story and pay him, are stopping their financial support by removing the story completely. It's good to see companies step in and make it clear they do not support or condone these 
his actions at all. It should be obvious that Kenya Suzuki should see prison time for this behavior. There is no excuse, and it's obvious that Kenya Suzuki was looking for this material for gratification reasons. Why? What other reason would you have for owning this material? There's a really good point in the Anime Man's video about the difference between drawn fictional anime characters and real, real images. And a lot of Japanese people are trying to compare them or raise similarities between them. But there is no similarity there. There shouldn't be anyone trying to compare or normalize this by comparing the two mediums. Everybody recognizes the genuine massive difference between fictional characters and real children. And the people that are trying to defend Kenya Suzuki through defense of anime media shouldn't be. There is no defense here. Because in a scenario like this, whether you support or disavow anime mediums involving fictional characters, you should still hold the stance that what Kenya Suzuki did is wrong, illegal, unjustifiable, criminal, and should see actual punishment. There is no excuse. When these allegations came to light, many people immediately went to discussing many of the other mangakas who have been arrested for very similar things. For example, Roboni Kenshin's author, who was arrested for possession of cheese pizza. This was in 2018, and the 47-year-old author was ordered to pay a fine of 200,000 yen, which is $2,000, and he was let go, which, once again, shows that Japanese punishments aren't very strict. Evidence procured around the Roroni Kenshin author proved that he possessed numerous DVDs featuring these illicit images and many other materials. During his deposition, the author said that he liked girls in this age group, and currently, a guilty plea to such crime can lead up to one year of prison and a maximum fine of 1 million yen. And this isn't the only scenario in Japan where an author was slapped on the wrist for something like this. The author of Toriko was arrested for violating the laws, including paying a 16-year-old 80,000 yen to partake in illicit acts. As a result of this arrest, one of their series was cancelled by Shonen Jump, and they were sentenced for two years in prison. However, the sentence was suspended for four years. However, a more recent arrest that many people go to when discussing this situation is the 29-year-old author of Act Age, who was arrested for allegedly committing an act on a child. This attack took place on June 18. A high school girl was taken advantage of, and he'd been reported to have done the same thing to someone else. The police arrested him, who bore resemblance to the suspect, and an investigation is still underway. However, police reported that he stated that there is no doubt about the accusations. Acts like this seemingly happen a lot more than people like to discuss and admit, especially in Japan. And I saw in Joey's video, he mentioned why is it that many mangakas are found in this sort of situation? However, I don't really think that's the case. I just think that because these people are so famous, they're the ones that people talk about, and they're the ones that make headlines. This is a very large problem, especially in Japan, and something that a lot of people don't talk about. People should be talking about this. Authors who do this stuff should have their series cancelled. There is no excuse for acts like these, and it's fucking disgusting that so many people will excuse these acts because they like the story the author created. I don't give a fuck if you like the story the author created. This is not okay. And that leads us back to Kenny Suzuki, the now ex-author of the deserialized series Please Tell Me Galko-chan, left in limbo wondering if this person who genuinely, seriously, obviously needs help will actually receive the help they need and the punishment they deserve for the purchase of this cheese pizza. Honestly, considering how lenient Japan is on their punishments, it doesn't seem that Kenny Suzuki is going to get the punishment they genuinely deserve for this act. Instead, it seems they'll be let off with a slap on the wrist, and sadly, I think that's something Japan needs to resolve by harshening their laws to make sure people who commit these acts get punished properly and so that people who commit these acts realize it's not okay and that if they do commit these acts they will be punished hopefully deterring these acts and making it so that like this stops happening, or at least minimizing it as much as possible. I don't expect this to be the last time an allegation like this gets made, and I will cover any future allegations like this, but I hope that everyone, even if you enjoyed the series Please Tell Me Galko chan stands by me in saying that the author, Kenya Suzuki, is an unforgivable person who should see actual punishment, and that there is no excuse for anything like this. Thanks for watching this video. If you did enjoy it or found it otherwise informative, please do go thank Joey. Joey's video is the one that inspired me to make this video, and if you you do go check out his video, leave a comment saying I sent you. With that being said, as previously mentioned, if you did find this video enlightening, please do consider subscribing to the channel. I'm aiming for 100k in the next few months. Since I was 11, I've aimed for the goal of getting a plaque, and to see that I'm so damn close to that goal is insane. I would appreciate all of the support on this channel. All of the support so far has been ridiculous and does not go ignored or for granted. I appreciate everyone who's stuck with me and supported me for so long as I've worked to grow this channel and to reach that goal. Feel free to check out my Twitter also if you'd 
you'd like to see my takes on other situations, if you'd like to see some memes I post, if you'd like to get to know me better, or for whatever other reason people follow people's Twitters in 2022. I don't really know how to sell a Twitter to you other than it's a Twitter account. You can also check out my Twitch if you'd like to see me talk about situations, if you'd like to see me play games, if you'd like to see more of me. For whatever reason, you'd check out a Twitch as well. I do talk about drama over there, so if there is a situation you want me to talk about, you can talk to me about it on stream. You can mention it and I'll research it on stream. I'll look into it. Whatever reason you'd want to check me out on Twitch, please do go check it out. Links in the description and on screen. Thanks for watching. I will see you next time and peace. I'm a stylish guy. Spend a little walk, put in. Let me. We can catch a fly. Says she wanna rock, put in.